Hey guys, what's up? Holderheck here, back with your Phase 1 pre-raid gear set. I'm gonna be doing a whole series of these, so make sure to stay tuned for Phases 2 through 6. Uh, real quick, gonna address the fact that I'm an orc instead of a tauren. I know, it's, it's shocking, it shocks me too, but I'm definitely gonna be playing an orc in Classic. Uh, you just cannot get around how useful that plus 5 weapon skill is, and... You know, you may not be guaranteed that hand or rag, the Eye of Sulphurus may never drop, so you could be using axes, and you should be using axes if you're an orc, uh, because that reduces glancing blows, gives you an extra percent chance to hit, it's just, I mean, there's really no other option. So, we're gonna be an orc in Classic, uh, still gonna be Holder Heck though, so that'll be a good carryover. Anywho. Let's get into our Phase 1 gear set. Uh, you will notice that this is slightly different than the one I presented in my first video. Um, for a couple of reasons. A, I have new information now, so that's, you know, I gotta change things up a little bit. And B, I was really, really, really trying to desperately avoid using the Devil Soar, True Strike Shoulder combo. It's just, it's so played out and uh, easy that I was trying to build an entire set around Black Dragon Scale, and I did, and it works, and you end up with, you know, a little bit more attack power than this, but, you know, your crit chance is abysmal, and with that new information is more important than ever, so we have to stack crit, and it's just a better set. It's just a better set. You could still do it, because the Black Dragon Scale set gives you that fire resistance, and that's also what I was kind of going for, and that could be helpful on, you know, Ragnaros being a fire resistance fight. Uh, good luck melee DPSing Ragnaros, though, um, as he has that by fire be purged AoE knockback on anyone with a mana bar. Uh, could do it theoretically if you just stood really, really far away from anyone else, but I think it would just be a pain in the ass and you should probably just heal on Ragnaros. Anywho, let's get into the gear. Oh, this is what it looks like. Isn't that pretty? I think so. Let's turn that off so you can actually read stuff. Okay, let's get into your pieces for phase one. Uh, the first thing we're going to go over is your headgear. Uh, Eye of Rend, absolute best in slot. There is nothing that can replace the Eye of Rend. Well... That's a lie. There's a couple things that can replace the Eye of Ren, but you don't want them because this is best in slot. That's how best in slot works. Um, yeah, 2% crit, 26 attack power. Like, it's great. It's just really great. Um, on the scale of, do you have to fight for it? Uh, yeah. Yeah, this one's gonna be fight for it or LOL. Like, literally every melee DPS wants this thing, uh, rogues. Warriors, Hunters, yeah, Hunters will take Eye of Rend because crit, because also Hunters will take everything because any reason. So you're going to have to fight for this one. Definitely put that one in between LOL and fight for it. Uh, side grades that you could get, uh, Crown of Tyranny, a little bit more attack power, one less crit. I don't feel like the trade-off is worth it. Or Rage Fury Eye Patch, which is the discount version of the Eye of Rend, and it would be far easier to acquire since you're going to be running BRD a lot. Uh, so yeah, either or, Rage Fury is fine, but try to get Eye of Rend, that's going to be your best bet. Moving on to the Mark of Forging. This is a quest reward. Uh, you have to do a long quest in the Plague Lands called In Dreams. It rewards this at the very end. It is the absolute best in slot for melee DPS pre-raid. Uh, the good news, like I said, it's a quest item, so you don't have to fight for it. You just do the quest and boom, you get it. Happy, happy time. Uh, there's no real way to side grade this item. Um, all of these suck, <laughs> uh, compared to it, and the only thing that's even worth mentioning is the Ember Fury Talisman because of its fire resistance. Uh, it's always good to pick up some fire resistance along the way anytime you can. Um, moving on, True Strike Shoulders, um, these things are amazing, 2% hit, 
A uh, little bit of attack power. There's no stamina or intellect or anything, but uh, you can deal with it. Uh, you could also get the Wormhide Spalders, which are basically the exact same thing, minus that 24 attack power. Uh, I believe that's a quest reward. Yeah, I think so. Um, so these are pretty much guaranteed, but so are True Strike Shoulders. They, they drop a lot. You should have no trouble getting them. Um, you will have to fight for them, but because they drop so much, you're not going to have a problem getting them. Let's move on. Cape of the Black Baron. Uh, it's going to drop from Stratholm, Baron Rivendare. Uh, this is the go-to melee DPS cape. Uh, rogues are going to hate you for taking this. Warriors are probably going to hate you for taking this. Uh, hunters <laughs> are going to hate you for taking this. Um, yeah, this one, this one's right up there in LOL. Uh, you're going to have to fight every single time this thing drops. And you're also going to have to justify your class and your DPS. So you better make sure you're out DPSing everyone when you try to roll on the Cape of the Black Baron. Um, possible side grades? Uh, maybe Stone Skin Gargoyle. Uh, that one drops a little bit higher and you're going to be in the same place and get it anyway. But uh, it's really, really not as good as the Cape of the Black Baron. Uh, it's 14 attack power and almost half a crit where this is, you know, three-fourths of a crit and 20 attack power. So, yeah, it's like, mm, it's not really as good. But you could take it, just like before, you could take the Rage Fury Eye Patch. It's just not as good. Let's move on. Savage Gladiator Chain. The elusive Savage Gladiator Chain. Um, I believe I mentioned in one of my videos, I tried farming this, this breastplate for, like, two years <laughs> and uh i ended up getting the ghoul skin tunic in nax ramus before uh this thing dropped so i guess good luck it just really all comes down to whether or not um what's his name yeah garage really okay <laughs> whether whether uh G garage drops uh draw or spawns because he has to spawn there's the tournament event or arena event in brd and then you get like random bosses so uh, the random bosses uh have a chance to be spawned and then he only has a 15 percent chance to drop this thing if he is spawned uh my issue was he never spawned so that's a big deal uh savage gladiator chain if you're with a warrior, yeah, they're gonna fight you for this because this thing is amazing for Fury Warriors. Um, they're gonna they're gonna fight you tooth and nail for this. Um, but it's not really up there with LOL, uh, especially if you're just running a regular BRD group and you have like a prot warrior. Maybe maybe he's prot. Maybe he wants to tank. That that's what you hope for. And then um, God hunters will try to take this too. Oh God, if if a hunter took this, I that's that's cause for nuclear war i don't even i don't even know what to say at that point like this is not stop it hunters just stop it okay let's say you don't get savage gladiator chain uh breastplate of bloodthirst you can get from a quest in winter spring that's not too bad and then you're running brd all the time so it's almost guaranteed you're gonna have at least death dealer breastplate um which you can see is obviously not as good but it's not that bad. It's not that bad. So, uh, probably gonna have Death Dealer. Try for Savage Gladiator and uh, upgrade from there. Savage Gladiator is your best in slot until, I swear to God, uh, like, I think it's like AQ, you can get Obsidian Male Tunic crafted, which is really like a side grade to this. And then the Ghoul Skin Tunic is your only real upgrade in the game from Savage Gladiator. So, good luck. I believe in you. I believe in me. I believe in us. Moving on. Uh, Bracers of the Stone Princess. This is going to come from Mardon. Um, yeah, the Princess. It's pretty high drop rate. You shouldn't have too much trouble getting this item. Um, you know, you're going to have to fight Hunters for it a little bit, but it's not that bad. Uh, nice little attack power boost. Uh, you have a couple side grades here in the Black Mist and Slash Claw Bracers. Either of these will work for you. Uh, they also provide hit, so if you need extra hit on your gear, these are great, great alternatives. Um, and you're gonna be running Upper Black Rock Spire a ton anyway, so I would just pick them up. Why not? 
Uh, then you have your Dreadforge Retaliator. This isn't technically uh, your best-in-slot weapon for pre-raid, but it's your easiest to acquire uh, weapon for pre-raid because, once again, you're going to be running BRD. Uh, this thing drops a fairly decent amount of the time off of the Emperor, and it's a pretty damn good weapon. The damage is okay, the speed is... Mm, it's okay. As a shaman, you actually want a fast two-handed weapon, but those don't really exist, at least ones that don't suck. So this is what you're going to have to deal with. You get a crit, you get attack power. It's pretty good. Um, you could upgrade to... not that. Where is it? Uh, Arcanite Reaper is a definite upgrade. 1% uh, crit is really not worth an extra 32 attack power and... Uh, higher top end damage and higher DPS, but Arcanite Reaper is also a ton of money, and you're going to be spending money on your Devil Source set as well, so mm, perhaps not the Arcanite Reaper unless you're just rolling in dough. And then, honorable mention to the Slave Driver's Cane it is hilarious to beat someone to death with a stick. And this is the best way to do it early game. That's really slow. I would really qualify this more as a PvP weapon. But you get that, you know, 29 strength. That's a ton of attack power. Um, really slow speed. And my favorite thing about the Slave Driver's Cane, or really any staff in general, is the fantastic sound it makes when you hit someone with it or when you crit someone with it. It's like a... It's like a bonk. Like, I can't... Let me, let me hit my cup here. It's kind of like this. It's like... Nope, that's not right. That's a plastic cup. Anyway, guys, um, it's a great sound. I can't stress it enough. Beating someone to death with a staff is just... Oof. So fun. So fun. And it's uh, right up your alley as an Enhancement Shaman. But let's just try to get that Dreadforge Retaliator. Uh, oh, and you're not really going to have to fight for it. Uh, warriors have a sort of mythology around the Arcanite Reaper. So, they're going to be dead set on that. If they have a crappy two-hander, they might try to take your Dreadforge Retaliator, but uh, don't let them. This one is right in between nobody wants it and fight for it, because it's really not that... Uh, this weapon doesn't have an aura around it, if you will. Moving on. Now we got your Devil Soar Gauntlets as part of the Devil Soar set. This is going to cost you a ton of money and or time skinning Devil Soars down in Ungoro. Uh, these two items I'm just going to talk about together, the, the gloves and the pants together. It's, it's just amazing. Like these stats this early on are just absolutely incredible. Uh, two crit, two hit. What is this? Like so much attack power. Um, you just can't beat them. You just can't beat the Devil Source set. Uh, figure out a way to get them, whether you buy them, whether you go tribal leatherworking um, and make them yourself and skin the Devil Source yourself. I mean, I really don't know what else to say about this. Uh, you're not going to have to fight for it necessarily, other than fighting for Devil Source spawns if you're going to go the make them yourself route. Um, if you're going to buy them, it's going to be a lot of money. A lot of money. I think, like, um, easily epic mount money. There are other things you could get. Um, they're not going to be equivalent, though. Um, you could switch the gloves themselves for the quest reward uh, Voon's Vice Grips. That'll give you the 2% hit. But you already see, look at how awful your stats become. And then you could switch these, uh, maybe... Leggards of the Chromatic Defiler. Uh, this is a quest that takes place in Winter Spring. It involves, you know, a lot of materials, but nothing super crazy. Uh, you could get these two, but then, I mean, look at these stats compared to where we were before. So you got 636 attack power and 17 crit. Let's put the Devil Soar back on. And then you got 692 attack power and 17 crit. So that's a... It's a fairly substantial DPS loss, um, but, you know, if you're broke, uh, do what you gotta do. Uh, let's move on from the Devil Source set. Uh, so then we have your Girdle of Bestial Fury. Um, you get this from the BRD Eviscerator. Um, it's pretty good. You actually have a very decent side grade here at Black Rock Spire uh, from Bennett Grimax. 
Uh, either or, honestly. Uh, the Girdle of Bestial Fury is like a tiny bit better. It's a tiny bit better. So uh, I try to get that. Uh, you'll have to fight for the Girdle of Bestial Fury at least a little bit. Because uh, rogues are going to want that attack power. Um, but really, it's not a great belt for them as it has no crit and it has no agility. Um, you will have to fight maybe hunters on the chisel brand um and then you also have the option of the vosh gajins strand i think i pronounced that right i'm really really good at pronouncing things today um you get one crit and you just ignore the dodge and 18 attack power and that's a quest reward that you could get instead of getting voon's vice grips so if you wanted to go a more crit heavy build uh, you could do that. You would lose a yeah, decent chunk of attack power, but now you have 18% crit as opposed to 17% crit. So that's really um, either or. That's a quest reward, so that's really easy to get. And if you don't want to fight anybody for anything, I'd just go with that and be happy about it. But I like making people mad, so we're going to take that from a rogue. Moving on. Uh, we have our Bloodmail Boots. Uh, this is a zone drop in Skullamance, I believe. It's a very, very low percent zone drop. Yeah, like 1%. So you're going to have to run Skullamance an absolute uh, poop ton to <laughs> get these boots. But these boots are also like BIS Fury Warrior boots. So you're going to have to fight them really, really hard if you take one with you. Uh, into Skullamance and these things drop. They're fantastic boots. They're fantastic boots. Um, but there's a really good chance you're never going to see them, kind of like the Savage Gladiator chain. So what you would have to do in that instance is I would probably just go after these Swift Walker boots. They give you one crit, 14 attack power, and then you lose that hit. But then also you would just switch your Bracers of the Stone Princess to Slash Claw or Black Mist. And, you know, you end up with a little bit higher crit, a lot less attack power. But at the end of the day, you still have the hit you need. Um, as an orc, you don't need 6% hit, but you should just get it anyway, because now you're hit capped no matter what, and you're reducing glancing blows. But let's just assume that we're going to get our stuff that we want. Let's just, let's just play the smiths and... Just like hope that we just get what we want this time. Good times for a change. We're redoing it, guys. We're going back to classic. We're gonna make all the wrongs right. That's why we're doing this. That's why I'm doing this. Right? Anyway, we got our rings. Uh, Blackstone ring. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's best in slot pre-raid. There's just nothing else. Uh, you need that hit. Um, and the Pain Weaver Band. I mean, that's, like, really it, guys. It's Blackstone Ring and Pain Weaver Band. It's, like, uh, if you got the Myrmidon Signet, eh, it's still, it's still not even as good. <laughs> so yeah, it's pretty nice. Uh, get the Blackstone Ring off of the Princess. You're going to be farming her for a couple of things. And Pain Weaver Band off of Dracosath. He drops that thing all the time. Um, both of these, you're probably going to have to fight people for because they are best in slot uh, for everybody. Um, every rogue wants the Blackstone Ring. Every DPS warrior wants the Blackstone Ring. Every rogue and every warrior wants the Pain Weaver Band. Pain Weaver Band. So, yeah, you're just going to have to deal with uh, fighting people for these. Uh, good luck. I believe in you. We can do it. Uh, let's move on. The last two items in our build here. You're going to have the Hand of Justice. Ooh-wee, the Hand of Justice. You know, if the Rune of the Guard Captain was Phase 1, we wouldn't have this problem. But for some reason, the Rune of the Guard Captain is a Phase 3 item. And I'll explain that later when we get into our Phase 3 set. But my god, like, it's 20 attack power in one hit. And it's a green. And it's a quest item. But you're telling me that I gotta wait till Phase 3 for that. Okie dokie. Anywho, uh, Hand of Justice. 2% uh, chance on melee hit to gain one extra attack and 20 attack power. Uh, this and the Black Hand's Breath 
are literally like the only melee trinkets in the game for half the game. So, yes, you're going to have to fight literally everyone for the Hand of Justice, and you're going to have to do tons of Emperor runs for the Hands of Justice, because despite it having a 19% drop chance, in my experience, that is not true. Also, I could be ah, misremembering, but I always thought this thing dropped off a of General Anger Forge. Maybe they patched that in later on. But yeah, uh, tons of Emperor runs. You're going to have to fight everyone on the planet for Hand of Justice. The good news is Black Hand's Breath is a quest reward. So you're going to have that no matter what. Moving on to the enchants on these items. Uh, we should go over how much they cost and really is it worth enchanting these items with this stuff. Uh, the first two things we're going to go over are going to be the Librams of uh, Veracity, I believe. I'm sorry. Ooh, it's an Arcanum of Veracity. But yeah, you're going to get these. Uh, it requires a little bit of mats. You got to find a book and pay 30 gold. That's a fairly good chunk of change for early vanilla. But you're going to have the Eye of Rend until at least, at least the first time you kill Ragnaros if the Crown of Destruction drops. So you're going to have that for quite a bit of time. And you're going to have your Devil Sore Leggings for, um... <laughs> uh, an embarrassingly long time before you replace these things. So, yeah, enchanting these two items is no big deal. Um, let's move down here. You'll actually see all the mats required. Uh, you see your Arcanums here, Live of Veracity. Uh, just, you can click that quest when I link these items and it'll tell you exactly how to do it. It's not very complicated, it's just kind of expensive. Uh, creating your Devil Source set is going to be a huge chunk of change. Ignore this approximate cost. That's like its vendor value. Like, there's... Uh, it's way more expensive than that if you're buying these materials off the auction house. The only other enchants on here really worth mentioning would be Crusader. Early game, that might not drop. It might be really hard to find and also very expensive. So you might have to have a lesser enchant on your weapon. Uh, Crusader is the way to go. If you can get Crusader on your weapon, get it. It's the really only enchant you'll ever use on a weapon. And then moving down here, you're going to see where all of that stuff comes from and its estimated drop rate. Uh, this is pretty good. None of this stuff is super, super hard to come by, except the Blood Mail Boots and the Savage Gladiator Chain. Um, also, you see a great deal of it comes from Black Rock Spire and Black Rock Depths. So that's pretty cool. You don't have to farm everything all over the place. Uh, you know, except, you know, Skullamance over and over and over and over and over again for those boots and Stratholm until the cape drops and you can actually get it. Well, that's it for your pre-raid uh, close to best in slot gear set. Um, if you have any questions about this, just let me know in the comments. If you think I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. If there's any other gear sets you'd like me to make beyond the phase one through six, uh, let me know. I've been thinking about, and by thinking about, I mean I already made them, I just don't know if I'm going to make a video about them. Uh, a fire resist gear set, a nature resist gear set, and a frost resist gear set. And that'll be useful for the various resistance fights in the game, i.e. Ragnaros, Huron, and Saffron. But that's all I got for you today. I don't have a witty catchphrase yet. You know, I'm working on that, like something I can open the videos with and end the videos with. But uh, for now, thanks for watching and have a fantastical day. Bye bye